Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on using the RAND and RAND between functions in Microsoft Excel to produce random numbers. Oftentimes in counseling research, it's helpful to be able to produce random numbers to facilitate functions such as random sampling and random assignment. And of course, in teaching, it's helpful to produce random numbers for purposes of demonstrating statistical concepts, for example. So on this worksheet, I have three variables, ID, random variable one, and random variable two. I'm going to show you a couple different ways to produce a random number. And you can see here in the ID variable, I just have uh, 20 participants, right? one through 20, 1001 through 1020. And I'm going to show you these two different ways and how you can apply it to uh, random assignment in this case. Although it could also be used for random sampling. So there's an important concept with both the RAND and RAND between functions uh, that I want to start off with. So let's look at the RAND first. So we have RAND and then open parenthesis and close parenthesis. This is how this function works. And you can see it produces uh, 0 0.008. Right? And let's autofill this all the way down. Right? We can see that all the values are between 0 and 1, which is how the RAND function works. Now you'll notice that the top value is now 0.48 when it was 0 0.008. That's because every time you change something on the worksheet, it's going to recalculate these values. For example, if I go over here to uh, G2, enter a value of 1, and hit enter, it just recalculated all these random numbers. Now that can become a problem. You see, when I deleted the one, it did it. Uh, that can become a problem depending on what you want to do with the numbers. So one way to keep these static is to highlight them and hit Control C. That copies. Now let me move over to the G column, and you want to paste special values and number formatting. Now you can see it, it updated them again. But the last list, the one that I copied, is still here, and it is static. So if I go over here and I put a value of 1 in, you can see that the function updated again, but these values did not. So how might these values be used? Well, let me delete the function. And I'll show you one way they can be used. If you want to randomly assign, these 20 participants into two groups. You could take these values, you could copy and paste them over into random variable one. Now I did a default paste, which is control V, so it took out the grid lines there. And you could sort this column B from smallest to largest. And notice how that reorders the ID numbers. So you have the smallest value here and the largest value here. So these participants are now randomly assigned. If you, say, wanted to do it in groups of 10, you would take the first 10 here. And this would be one level of an independent variable, say the control group. And this would be the other level, say the treatment group. So there are other ways you can use the RAND function as well. Using these same random numbers, say what you really wanted was a random variable containing values from 0 through 100. You could take this value, so the equal sign, this value here and shift 8, which is the asterisk, and multiply by 100. And autofill that down. 
and now you have random numbers from 0 through 100. However, the ran between function offers us another way to do this, which is a little easier. So uh, first I'm going to take these values and go ahead and put them over in random variable. So I'll control C, but this time I want to leave the grid lines in place. So I'm going to paste values, but not overwrite the formatting. So you can see the, the borders stay in place here. And I'm going to delete these two variables. So what the ran between function allows you to do is you can specify what they refer to as a bottom and top number, right? So a low and high value for your random uh, number. So let's say we want the same thing as before, except we don't want to produce it with ran and then multiply by 100. We could just put in 0 as the low value and 100 as the high value. And now we have random numbers from 0 through 100. But of course, there's the same problem. If I move over here and say put any value, let's just put 0, you can see it updates. So you have to do the same thing. Uh, you have to copy and paste these values using values and number formatting or at least that's one option to keep these static. Uh, there are other paste options, of course, they'll do the same thing. So I'll delete the function, and now we have random numbers between 0 and 100. And we could do the same thing. We could uh, put them in a random variable, too. We could sort by this and uh, then divide up our participants into different levels of an independent variable. If these 20 cases didn't represent cases at all, so if these 20 numbers actually represented potential cases, uh, then we could randomly sample using that same method. We could sort and just take, say, the top 10. Right? Be the same, we would accomplish the same goal. So I'm going to copy these values over. So control C, I'll put this in a random variable and it's going to be just values. I could also cut and paste if I didn't want to delete that column. That would be control X uh, for cut. Control C is for copy. I want to show you one more aspect of random variables. So we would expect, since these variables are random, uh, 0 through 1, and these are random 0 through 100, that they would not correlate uh, very strongly with each other, meaning the correlation would approach zero. So let's test that out. Use the correlation function, C-O-R-R-E-L. And the first argument it's looking for is array one, which would be random variable one. The second array two. And as expected, we can see the correlation is very small between these two variables. Another way you can look at this graphically is you can highlight random variable 1 and 2, go to insert, and insert a scatter plot. As you can see, random variable 1 is on the x-axis and random variable 2 is on the y-axis. So I'm going to increase the size of this and just make it a little more visible. So you can see there's no particular rhyme or reason to how these variables are distributed. Right? This, is, this is a scatter plot that shows us that there's no real relationship uh, between the variables. Now I can go up and put on the um, equation for the line, right? y equals mx plus b. And this will also give us the coefficient of determination, which is r squared which you see is very small. This would be interpreted as 0.18%. That's the shared variance between these variables. So as we might expect, there's no real relationship between random variable 1 and random variable 2. 
I hope this video on using the RAND and RAND between functions in Excel has been useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.